just a few scriptures in this chapter. As I was praying this week, asking the Lord, Lord, would you give me a direction for the Holy Spirit to move us? What word do you want to deliver? And uh, the Lord brought me to this passage. And uh, I thought on it and uh, I asked the Lord, uh, I didn't really ask him, I just thought in my mind that, you know, I could really use a pass on this one. But uh, that was not God's will. And uh, in the verse 23, this is Jesus speaking. And he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? And I want to stop the reading right there. What is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away. This message is about discipleship. What it means to be a disciple of Christ. Deny himself. We don't hear much about self-denial today. I have observed and look on the internet and I don't see much messages about self-denial. That's not popular. That doesn't appeal to the masses. That doesn't bring people into the church. You know, they have the so-called seeker-friendly churches. We got we to accommodate people and we got to make them feel everything is good and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's great going to church and uh, don't preach too long and don't preach too strong and uh, make sure everybody feels good when they leave and, and the aim of the Holy Spirit is not to make us feel good but to make us holy and uh, to transform us praise God brother testified uh, about the example of the potter he saw the, the, the pot, it was marred in his sight, and he made it over again. And sometimes the Lord has to work on us. And here in this, this passage, Jesus tells them just plain that no sugar coating. Take up his cross when daily, deny himself, and follow me. The cross is a, a symbol of, of suffering and death and shame and ridicule and rejection and self-denial. The greatest example of self-denial is Jesus Christ. Why did he leave his heavenly glory with the Father? Why? When the Father could have just wiped out humanity and started over again. Why did he do it? Love. He counted the cost. He saw it through. He knew it was involved. Isaiah prophetically speaking, and who will go for us? Send me, Lord. I believe Jesus was speaking through the mouth of, of Isaiah. Send me. I'll go. Oh, praise the Lord. And we struggle. We struggle in area of areas of our lives with it's a lifelong battle against sin. By crucifying our own desires. Crucifying sin. The deeds of the body, crucifying, killing them, bringing them under. 
We suffer in a war against satanic powers and all the, the hosts of Satan. As we try and advance the kingdom of God, there is war going on. Our sister Judy prays in her prayers. Most times she says, it's all spiritual warfare. And I, I can't, how true that is. It's all spiritual warfare. We don't realize it, and maybe we minimize it, but it's all spiritual warfare. The, the enemy, you know, that Jesus said, the thief cometh to kill, destroy, and steal. Not just in this life. He wants to take your eternal life, your eternal glory with God. That's the bigger prize he's after. Not just, not just to cause you trouble in this life. Not just to cause you misery in this life. Not just to in, in, you know, entrap you, but oh, he wants to rob you of eternal glory. Oh Lord, help us this morning. What does self-denial look like to you this morning? What does self-denial look like to you? You ever thought about it? What does self-denial look like? Well, I go to church. I could be out on the golf course or I could be doing something else or having brunch with the wife. I go to church. Is that self-denial? Maybe. You know, I, I struggle with that a bit because if going to church is self-denial, maybe the priorities are messed up. Amen. You know, maybe it's, we go to church because we want to go into the presence of God. Amen. We want to come in. We want to worship. Yes. He's worthy of it all, we say in just a few moments. Ago. He's worthy of it all, my brother and sister. He's worthy of my praise and my glory. He's worthy of my time. Yes. Well, no, I can't go to church tonight. It doesn't fit into my schedule, you see. I, we got something scheduled or the kids got some activity or, or whatever the case may be. And I'm not being critical of anyone. I'm just saying this is life. And, oh, Lord, what, what does self-denial look like? Once a week, that's self-denial. You get sick, you get a pain, you rush into the hospital, and you got something seriously wrong, and you're praying, and God says, oh, wait a minute. What is this, Tuesday? No, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not on on Tuesday. You're going to have to wait till Sunday. God doesn't do that. Aren't you glad? <laughs> Praise the Lord. 24 7, 365. He's there. And where are we? Self -den what does self denial look like? It's not just, it's not just discarding a few habits. You know? It's more than that. It's it's a, a it's a attitude. It's it's something within us that causes us to want to please Him and want to serve Him, knowing that the things that attract us are are things that are are attractive to the flesh, to the carnal mind. The things that that rob us of the peace of God. It's. It's, you know, I, I, oh, well, I'm doing this, and, and I give money to the church, and, and I attend services regularly, whether that's once a week, twice a week, or three times a week, and, and uh, you know, I, I obey the laws. That's, that's wonderful, but that's, there's more than that, praise God. There's more self-denial. You know, we know about the works of the flesh. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, carnal desires, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred. And most of the big ticket items we don't have a problem with. I say most. When we get into this hatred and emulations 
and wrath and strife. We get into those, those areas thinking evil of our brother and sister. Of slander and gossip. We, we think those things come. Those are in our humanity. We, we gravitate. Those things just seem to well up, you know, and, and we, we're listening. We're, we're somehow caught up in some of those things. Take up your cross. Jesus knew. He knew what it was. He counted the cost in, uh, I believe it's Luke. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. What? What did he just say? Hate not his family. Jesus, couldn't you have said it a little nicer? Couldn't you, couldn't you have said it just a little bit different? No, that, that hate means to love less. Nothing, nothing gets in the way of our love for Christ. We compromise. We make excuses. And whosoever doth not bear his cross come after me cannot be my disciple. Or which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost whether he hath sufficient to finish it. Lest happily after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it all that behold that behold it begin to mock him saying this man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to war, make war against another king, sit it down, not down first, and consulted consult, consult whether he had be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000. Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage and desireth con conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Wow. That's a pretty high standard, isn't it? Forsake all. God comes first. You know, it's not just not doing or giving up the things that are, that are unlawful, but it, it's the things that are, are distracting, the things that, that come in our lives. Those are, those are the more dangerous things that, that seem to just grab our attention and grab our efforts and our time. They keep us away from the house of God. What's important about attendance in the house of God? What is important? Brother Ron, you take, you take notes, you you. You mark it down if we're here or not. Well, it's, I pay attention. Why do I do that? Because I'm the shepherd. Every time we lose some sheep, I mourn. Where are they? Why did they leave? How are their families doing? I, I don't see things so good. Lord, bring them back. Lord, have mercy. Lord, help us to pick up our cross. Count the cost. You see, there is a prize. And it's eternal life. You know, what, what did Jesus say? This is another... Jesus never minced any words. It's, it's just, you know, in today's environment, you can't talk this plain, or at least some folks think you can't talk this plain. But they approached him and they said, Heaven, we cast out devils in your name. 
And haven't we done healings in your name? Haven't we done miracles in your name? And he's going to say, depart from me, I never knew you. Why did he say that? Because some have not counted the cost. And some have not persevered to the end. It's not once saved, always saved, but he that persevereth to the end, the same shall be saved. It's pressing for the kingdom. It's not taking a leisurely approach. We, we kind of take a, a kind of a, a undisclosed retirement in a sense, we sit in the pew, but we're retired in place. And the fire and the pressing for the kingdom has, has diminished. And I don't see any of that in the word of God. I don't see any of that in the apostles and disciples. I don't see any of that. In fact, I see a strengthening. I see a fire continuing to burn in them, oh Lord. Use us for the kingdom. Yes, Lord. There are souls in danger out there. Yes, Lord. It's not, oh, we're okay in, this, in these four walls. Everything's good. We, the family's all here. That's, that's not it. We all have loved ones who are out there. And I don't mean that in a judgmental way. Please don't take it that way. I mean, we pray for them. Lord, Lord, we know they're not living for Christ. We, we know they're not close to the Lord. We, we know they're not going to church regularly or at all, maybe. But we, and we pray, Lord, have mercy. Words, who is going to judge us in the end? Who's going to judge us? Brother Ron, Brother Mel, Brother Steve, or Brother Deacons? Who's going to judge us? No, none of us. It's the word that's going to judge us. The word is perfect. And God is merciful. I'm not, I'm not saying God is an unjust judge. God is righteous and perfect. God gives us so many chances. We hear and we've heard testimonies of those who have gone astray and how the Lord brought them back piece by piece, one at a time, and had mercy on their souls. Oh, Lord. He says in the scripture, for what is a, is a man advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself as he cast away? Gain the whole world or lose his soul? What's the worth of a soul? Is there anything we can put down and Dollars and cents, no. Anything that we could describe the worth of a soul. You see, when we are conceived in our mother's womb, a soul is created. Amen. And that soul is eternal. It is a spirit clothed in a fleshly body. And there is an end point to a degree, an end point where we put off this robe of flesh. And then we have to spend eternity in one of two places. The in between those two end points is up to us. You see, it's up to us. I love what the psalmist says. I can just read that. Psalm 139. Thine eyes did see my substance, and yet being unperfect, and in that book all my members were written, which in, in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. Now that's King James. 
Let me read NIV. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. God has a perfect plan for your life and my life. And the, the issue for us is to find that perfect will of God. To find that, that plan for our life. And how, how does that happen? It's just by being a follower of Christ. Young people, when you make the decision, or whoever, when you make the decision to take the water baptism, that starts, maybe a little bit before that, but that is kind of generally the start of your spiritual journey with the Lord. A momentous decision that you are making. Consciously, you are making. We don't baptize babies. You have to be an age of understanding. You have to understand what you're doing. We ask you, what do you understand? Why are you doing this? Who did anyone force you to do? This? No, it's it was my decision. Why? Why? Because of this, the Lord touched my heart, or whatever the reason. A momentous decision that starts you on a path. And Jesus tells us. Pick up your cross and follow me. Well, I'm only 15 years old. What, what kind of a... It's self-denial. It's, it's, it's following Jesus Christ. It's asking him to be the Lord of your life. Not to join a church. That's not it. Not to say, oh, I took the water baptism. That's not it. It's a personal relationship with him. Something that you feel in your heart that's real. And here, God wants to help us and strengthen us. The work of the soul. Someone wrote, What shall I profit him if he shall make a little sword of gain but lose his soul? What shall I profit him if he shall indulge some degrading passion and thereby lose his soul? What shall it profit him if he gratifies some vile lust and by it lose his soul? What shall it profit him if he swallow a few more intoxicating drafts and in the end lose his soul? What shall it profit him if he gratify a few more lusts of the flesh and lose his own soul? What shall it profit him if he enjoy a little longer the society of evil companions? Or even the smile and favor of the great ones of the earth and lose his soul. What shall it profit him? We have a few moments, a few more pleasures of any kind, pleasure that lasts so short a space and satisfies so very little. Well, they do last, and in lieu of them, lose his own soul. Who is not, on due reflection, prepared to answer such questions with the strongest negative? The angels in heaven, the spirits of the just made perfect that are already there and ask the same question, would declare in tones of loudest earnestness and solemn emphasis, nothing, nothing. A soul that is lost is lost forever. There's no coming back. In Hebrews, the writer says it is impossible for once who were those, for those who were once enlightened and experienced the power of them, quoting, not quoting exactly, but experienced the power of heaven, the Holy Spirit, and walked away from it, and it, it's left them to, to come back from such a condition. Oh, Lord, help us this morning. Help us this morning. There is, I'm going to close with one last passage of text. One of the parables that Jesus spoke about a beggar named Lazarus. And uh, the 
Peter's king. This king it said he was rich and lived a sumptuous life. And in this life he lived to this certain there was a certain rich king man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his voice, his eyes being in torment. And see if Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom, and he cried unto him, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in, in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in the slain. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you, to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. And then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldst send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into, into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses, and the prophets let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, if one went to them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. And I think of how true those words are. This is a parable. A parable, but what? What was the rich man's sin? What was his what was his sin? He was rich? No. The Bible doesn't say that. He got his wealth through good means. Was he vicious? Drunkenness or debauchery? No. The Bible doesn't say that either. Was he cruel? No, actually, he allowed Lazarus to be laid by his gate. And they gave him the crumbs from the table. What was? He was living essentially a selfish and worldly life. preaching or I don't like the way these people sing or I don't like the, the, the way this church acts or whatever and what they do I'm going to find another one it doesn't it doesn't make me feel good we fit the Lord into our schedule as opposed to fitting our schedule into the Lord's you know what I mean it's, it's worldly and selfish life. And I ask you, what does self-denial look like to you? What do we deny ourselves today? Would the world see us and see any difference in us and true followers of Christ? 
those who have sold out to Jesus Christ, would, would they see a difference in us? In our manners, our speaking, our talk, our dress? Lord, help us this morning. Help us. God's not condemning being rich. That's you're missing the point. It's how we live the life. Totally sold out to the master. Totally dedicated to Jesus Christ. And we aspire to that. We, we all struggle with that, don't we? I mean, we, we try to do our best. Even trying to do our best, we fail at times. We give in to our humanity and to our flesh. And we allow the enemy to weaken us. And we get distracted. And we get discouraged. And the Lord says, look to me. Look to me. I've given you all that you need to live successfully as a victorious Christian. The tools, the gifts are there for us. The Holy Spirit power, the Word of God, the assembly of the saints, having been compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Amen? Amen. Yes. We've seen what God has done. We know His Word is true. We've seen the Holy Spirit move and the Holy Spirit fall and we've, we've witnessed the things. God has shown us. And the Lord is saying, pick up your cross. Deny yourself. I think of the story of the rich young ruler who went to Jesus and said, Master, what must I do to, to inherit eternal life and enter heaven? And he says, well, obey the commandments and so on and so forth. And he says, I've done all that, but is there something else? For him to ask that question, he knew there was something else. The Holy Spirit had already convicted him that he didn't, he wasn't satisfied because of his mind. He said, well, I've done all these things. I go to church regularly. I give to the poor and I give to the, to the church and I do this and I, I clean the church and I whatever I do, I do. The, but is there something else? And Jesus said, well, sell all that you have. And give to the poor and follow me. Now he didn't want him to be destitute. That's not the, the that's not the theme and the message of that story. And the message is he knew in his heart. That's what his heart was set on. All his possessions and his wealth. And to give that up, to give that up, he says he, he went away sorrowful. The word of God described. Because Jesus went right to the heart of the man. What's holding you back from attaining more in Christ? What is holding you back from reaching another level in Christ Jesus? What is it? Do you really want to know the answer to that? Don't be satisfied where you are. You're missing out. You're, there, there's more to attain. There's more that God has for you. There's more blessing. There's more peace. There's more joy. There's more victory, praise God. Don't be satisfied with where you are. Amen. Surrender. Lord, what is it? Pray, you have the courage to pray that prayer. Lord, what is holding me back? What holding me back from, from being a better pastor? What holding me back from being a, a, a better Sunday school teacher? What holds me back from being a better follower of yours? What is holding me back? 
I want all that you have for me, Lord. I, I want every blessing that you have. I don't want to get to the end and look back and say, you know, I wish, I wish I'd prayed more. I, I wish I'd attended more services. I, I wish I'd, I'd just read the word more. I, I wish, I want to leave it all on the field, as they say in sports. And when the game is over, I want to have, I've done it all. I've left it all. Paul said, I, I fought a good fight. I finished the race. I kept the faith. I let it all, I let it all down. Praise God. I didn't hold anything back. What God wanted, I gave. And he knew there was a crown of glory waiting for me. Praise the Lord. Don't you want to feel like that, my brother and sister? I, I want to feel that. I want to know it. I don't want to be fooled. I, I don't want to get to the end and say, oh, I, you know what? I, I hope I'm all right. I, I hope everything's okay. Why? Why would you allow yourself to get to that point? Because of the things of this life? Because of the attractions and distractions and, and satisfying the, the carnal desires? When Jesus gave his all for you and I, he shed his precious blood that you and I might have eternal life. Oh, praise the Lord. That's why the Holy Supper I mentioned earlier, that's why it's so, it's so holy, it's so important to us. We, we don't make it a, 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 a you know, something, a, a procedure, a process, or, or something that, that we worship. No, it's it's what we're doing. It, it's the bread and the wine do nothing for you if there isn't preparation in the heart. Amen. There isn't the, that coming before the Lord and saying, Lord, search me and try me and know me. Lord, help me to shed all those things that are detrimental to my spiritual walk. I don't want to leave anything there, Lord. I don't want one scintilla of sin to remain in my body. Lord, I, I want to confess it all. I want to be right before you. Because of what you have done. Because of the sacrifice you made. Because of the way you, you handled. The way you loved me and loved us. Oh praise the Lord. We sing Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Isn't that true this morning? Amen. Praise God. So spiritually, where are we? Each of us asked that question. I asked it of myself. I had to come in groups and grab it with the word, Lord, where am I? I'm right with you in this, brothers and sisters. Need the Holy Spirit to help me and help us all together. We want to see his face. Amen. Yeah. And most of all, we want to see, we want to see the Lord work. We want to see the power of God come down. Lord, take us from where we are and, and bring us to a higher level. Yeah. And it's got to be an individual thing. We we can't, you know, it can't be it corporately has to become individual. You and I individually have to seek his face. Lord, help me. Help me to deny myself. Help me to pick up the cross. Help me to live the life. Be the example. Come to the prayer meetings. Come to the services. Come and enjoy the Lord. Come and worship Him. Come with an open heart and say, Lord, oh Lord, reach to me like I've never been reached before. Take away, Lord, all justification. All pride. Paul, if any man on this earth, to me, in my mind, could say, Lord, I think I've come pretty far. I, I, you know, I'm, I've done pretty good. I, he never said it that way. He said, Lord, I, 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 press, I haven't attained. I, 
I'm not where I need to be yet. I'm, I'm still pressing for the kingdom. I, I still have a ways to go. And I have a resume. If I would read the resume that says I'm the greatest, but I'm not. Help us to press for that kingdom. Help us, Lord, this morning. I'm going to close. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Oh, Lord. Let that be our prayer. Let me follow Jesus. Pick up your cross daily. Pick up your cross daily and follow him. May the Lord encourage you this morning. May his name be praised. Amen. Amen. Amen.